Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, all I ask is if you like what we do, if you like the content, if you like the message, if you if you are a believer of technical analysis and trading on the market that you have, not the market you want, uh, show us a little bit of support. Uh, all we ask is drop a like on the video, subscribe, share, uh, and all that good stuff. I'll hopefully continue uh, to provide a lot of value. I'm going to cut this video a little bit uh, short. My daughter has a preseason uh, tournament for high school basketball today, so I have to get out of here uh, ASAP. I totally forgot about it, but uh, let's talk about the tape. So uh, yesterday, you know, yesterday, well, two days ago, we talked about uh, the importance of reclaiming the 10-day moving average on uh, the NASDAQ 100. That is the birth of the trade. And for the last couple of days, we had a pretty uh, great rally. And I think a lot of traders are focusing on the wrong thing. They continuously talk about was that the bottom, was that the bottom, was that the bottom. That That's cool and all. And it's a great conversation piece that you can have at parties on social media or with your dog. But the most important part is it's not if that is the bottom of what happens next and where is the buyer sentiment and where's the se uh, seller sentiment. And one thing that we see very, very quickly how the market changes, how sentiment changes is based on buyer and seller behavior. So if you guys look, uh, the, you know, if you guys look at uh, all, uh, July the 11th, right? What happened July the 11th? July the 11th was that blow off pause. Uh, nothing fundamentally has changed in the market. Nothing uh, has come in geopolitical or uh, anything on the surface that should change the sentiment of the buyers, but the buyers got tired. That's all it was. The buyers got tired and gave us a tradable move in the beginning. And then obviously we lost the 50 day moving average. And for the next four weeks, we lost about 9.4% of our value uh, from top to bottom. Uh, now it's the kind of uh, the opposite, right? Instead of worrying about if that was the bottom, and maybe it was, right? The question is, are the sellers tired? That's a very, very important question. And we're starting to get a lot of answers. We're starting to get a lot of clues because again, nothing fundamentally has changed between July and what we saw here on uh, August the 5th. But slowly but surely, the sellers are getting tired. We've been discussing this for a number of days. Uh, the market is brushing off bad news. Again, this morning, we had uh, the headline of two, uh, I think it was two test missiles fired uh, by Iran. The market had a little bit of a dip and they brought it back up. You had this morning, this afternoon, you had Bostic speaking, uh, made some comments that the market initially didn't like. Uh, futures came in very aggressively for about five, 10 minutes. The market brought everything back up. Again, that's the coin of reference, point of reference that the buyers are uh, in control right now because number one, the sellers are tired and they are engulfing bad news. So the question is, what happens next? Uh, this morning, you had uh, one out of two inflation numbers come in. Uh, the PPI really uh, drove securities today, big moves today. You had the NASDAQ up 400 points or 2.4%. Uh, you had the S&P up 1.6% and you had the Dow up another 400 points, up 1%. Now, the question is, what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow is... Uh, the CPI number, more inflation, right? More inflation talk. Uh, obviously, if there is another uh, good area of interest of uh, buying and the news is uh, productive, can we have one more day of buying? Yeah, every, I think everybody would like to see that. What we saw today uh, in the pivots, mega cap technology names were nuts. Again, we'll get to uh, the pivots in a second. Uh, you know, again, are we out of the woods yet? No, we're not. Okay, uh, for the bulls to have a risk on scenario, for the bulls to have uh, comfortable putting on overnights, uh, keeping a book risk on, we're going to have to reclaim back the 50 day moving average, which is roughly around the 472 area. But you can see this is a hell of a move. Uh, buyers definitely are are continuing to shrug off the um, a negative news like we talked about. And so far, again, this is a nice conjunction interval of now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of higher highs and higher lows. So tomorrow, we are obviously going to see uh, if the CPI can match 
uh, match the spark that the PPI gave us. Let's see more inflation readings, uh, and let's see if the market likes uh, what it has to say. Other than that, you know, again, we di- we discussed a-, a lot of names last night on the video. We talked about names coming out of channels. We talked about Tesla coming out of a tight channel. We talked about a second day play in Kava. And once the market confirms, guys, and that's the most important part of trading, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's a waiting game, right? It really is a waiting game. And you just, all you're doing is putting pieces into the puzzle. That's why all these supply and demand zones, they matter. They're not irrelevant. They're not just random lines on the sands. They're telling you the pieces of the puzzle of what's about to happen next. And as we saw how we reclaimed back the five-day moving average here, the 10-day moving average here, and now we traded all the way up to here, reclaiming back the 20, right? Reclaiming back the 20 and the 50 EMA, which is very, very important. Not as much as the 50 SMA, but again, baby steps is exactly what the bulls uh, need to do. Uh, look at the pivots today, right? Really, really strong moves. Uh, we talked about all these names, pretty much all these names on last night's video. Uh, you have AMD, uh, 139.14 needs to build. Again, not the cleanest trader in the world, but uh, AMD definitely gave us a nice move. We talked about the setup now for a couple of days and big strong move here. Closed at the highs of the day uh, in this 141.20. Here is the magic number here. 39.14 needs to build. Uh, Microsoft, again, we talked about, like, again, if you watched last night's video, we I, I think I used the word, it's a carbon copy of what AMD looks like. Uh, 410.25, uh, needs to build on Microsoft. Here was Microsoft, right? It took out this 410.25, reclaimed the 10-day moving average, pretty much closed at the high of the day around the 415 level. Really good move there uh, as well. Uh, Meta continues to shine. It really does. Uh, Meta 521 needs to confirm pre-market highs. Not only did Meta confirm uh, the pre-market highs of 521, it also confirmed the earnings highs, which was 527 traded all the way up to 531, uh, 531.50s. Any dips tomorrow, guys, watch this Meta into rising support. It should give at least a test tomorrow, uh, unless the market completely implodes, uh, into this 534.40s level. So really nice move uh, there as well. And Tesla, you guys remember last night on Tesla? What you need to do is like watch last night's video. It, the whole message was, and this is the message I've been talking about now for, for about a week, right? Yesterday, we, we don't know, right? We don't know which way. It was just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And I kept on saying yesterday, just let the directional bias confirm to us. You don't need to guess. You don't need to anticipate. You don't need to try to forecast. Wait to see which way Tesla breaks and you'll get a big expansion candle. Da, 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 da. Here we are. And Tesla confirmed all levels here. Took out the 201, the 204, and traded all the way up to this 208 and a half level. Huge move. Really, really huge move. Again, again, this is the whole point of being prepared on both sides. 201 to the upside, uh, 194.67 to the downside. Beautiful move. And last but not least, uh, Kama, right? We talked about Kama yesterday. Uh, 91.68 needs to build. Again, all you need to do is go back to the last night's video. Here was Kava, 91.68. It got above that and traded all the way up to 95. Really big move, 4, 4.5%, uh, 5% move on there. So the only thing that we can uh, get derailed tomorrow uh, are the CPI numbers. We'll see how they come in. We'll see how the market reacts to them. And let's see if we can continue this upward bias trend. Guys, God bless everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. With God's help, I will see you all tomorrow on the field. Take care. Have a great night.